The first competition that we're going to watch is slalom, and we're at a world championships in Austria. I've got with me John Fazy, who is a coach to the British slalom team. John, I see three people starting off together. Do they usually go off in threes? We are in fact watching the team event, where three paddlers representing a country paddle down the course together. These paddlers will also compete in the individual event. Can they go through the gates in any order they like? The course is defined by a series of numbered gates, and they must negotiate these gates in the correct number sequence. Of course, at each individual gate, the order in which the team does the gate doesn't matter. As we go down the course, you'll be able to see the numbers. They're going through the gates very carefully without touching them. Do they score penalties or something if they hit them? Yes, penalty seconds are added on to the elapsed time of every competitor. So it's time plus penalties that count, is that right? Yes, and the paddler has two runs. The best counts for the score. This paddler, gaining penalties here, won't stand much chance of running with this run, uh, of winning with this run. It looks jolly rough. Yes, this is grade five water, on an international grading scale of one to six. So it's very difficult water. Jolly pretty the way they cross the current there, isn't it? This high cross, as we call it, is a manoeuvre that's used in every slalom. Now we're watching an entirely different sort of canoe. What are these? These are the Canadian doubles. They're developed, actually, from the Red Indian canoe. I must say they don't look a bit like the Red Indian canoe. No, it's a long way from birch bark. In fact, it's glass fibre. And these people have to go, hello, somebody's capsized. Oh, thank heaven they've got out. Do they always have to get out like that? No, the Eskimos developed a, a technique of rolling and righting their canoes. We can see it here. So you can do it in any sort of canoe, even this Canadian single, is that right? Yes, of course it takes practice to roll a canoe on this sort of water. Ah, oh, now we're back with the British Slalom team again. Yes, they're showing us how a team should negotiate a gate. It's very slick. And now we're on an individual run. This man's going through the gate backwards. How does he know how to go through the gate? Above the reverse gates is a large letter R, but he must always present the left-hand gunnel of the boat to the red pole and the right-hand gunnel of the boat to the green pole. We can see him do it again through this forward gate. Can women also go in for this competition? Yes, there's a women's kayak class, and women also compete in the mixed Canadian doubles. Well, now we're at the prize giving and the British team I see on the right have got a bronze. That's good, isn't it? Yes, the British team have in fact come back with a gold medal from an individual world championships. Well, that's very good. Now we're watching wild water racing, is that right? Yes, here we see a paddler going down four, five, perhaps six miles of rough water. He's on his own, finding his own way down and working against the clock. But where are the other competitors? He's just alone. Well, each competitor sets off from the start, with a minute interval between him and the next competitor. Obviously, if he can catch up with the man in front, he's doing very well. This looks like grade five water again. Yes, this is really world championship stuff. This is the stuff we're used to in Great Britain, isn't it? Yes, this is the sort of standard on which we would hold our national championships. Now we're looking at the International 10 Square Metre Sailing Canoe, and Alan Hassel is with me, who is a member of the Royal Canoe Club. I believe that club has done the most in developing this type of canoe. Is that right, Alan? Yes. The club has developed these canoes from touring canoes over the last 50 years or so into the thoroughbred racing craft that you see here. He's sitting right out on a sort of plank. What is that? This is the sliding seat which he uses to balance the force of the wind uh, by his own weight. So he sails it upright all the time? Yes. It seems to go very fast. What sort of speeds do they do? 
about 15 knots. What sort of wind strength do they like? A force 4 to 5. They travel their fastest in a force 4 to 5 without very much sea. And here you see him putting the sliding seat across to the other side of the boat as he jibes. What's that bit of wood sticking out behind him there? That's a tiller extension so that he can control the rudder when he's sitting well over a metre out from the gunnel. When he can't reach the tiller, in fact. Mm. What happens when they capsize? Is it difficult to right them? No, a delay of about 10 seconds, and then you carry on racing. So that you hardly lose a, lose a place. Does he still stand a chance of winning, then? Many people have capsized many times and still won races. What happens when something goes badly wrong? It's certainly not serious. Canoes are quite stable, laying on their mast on the water like that. And you can just stand there in comfort, waiting for the rescue boat to come pick you up. <laughs> Pretty wet game. Yes, but no wetter than the many other forms of canoeing. No, that's true. It looks the most exhilarating form of canoeing, I must say. It certainly is. And a beautiful one to watch, too. Now we're on to surfing, and I've got David Bland with me, who is the secretary of the surfing committee. Dave, how do you compete in surf? Well, this is a competition to find the canoeist who can best handle and control and manoeuvre his canoe in the surf as it breaks onto a wonderful sandy beach. Here is a canoeist who's coming in with the surf breaking behind him, trying to control the canoe in as straight a line as possible, and finally is doing some form of trick or manoeuvre uh, at the end. These two look as though they're racing in. Ah, no, they're not. They're trying to control and manoeuvre the canoe on the wave, um, and then they have to turn around and paddle back out again before they can start their next run. Now, what's this man trying to do? He seems to capsize. Yes, he was trying to get the canoe up onto a vertical position as possible. Here you see another canoe. Again. Yes, he's trying to gain here. Ah, like that. Yes, and possibly putting the back end over the front. Um, right over, like yes, that. Yes, just like that. Loop, as it were. That's right, it's I called see. a loop. Mm -hmm. It's great fun. And this man's, what, trying to come in sideways or hold himself on the wave? Just or? hold himself on the wave in a sideways position. He nearly went over, didn't he? Yes, wasn't very good on that particular occasion. A lot of speed involved there. How fast do they go then? Well, the waves are coming in at 20, 30 miles an hour. Fast as that? It oh, sounds yes. terrific. This is where one aspect of the safety is concerned. Um, two people hit at that speed. Well, that was a nice pretty twist there, wasn't it? Yes. To start. Here's a big wave, six foot high, coming down. Mm -hmm. Picking him up, carrying him in. He's got to control himself and show that he's able to handle all that white, foamy froth. It's at 20 miles an hour, and it must be pretty frightening to be hurled over like that. Well, I think it is to those people who watch and those who are be beginners, but these boys are really used to it and are thoroughly enjoying the exhilaration of being tossed up in the air. And simply doing the Eskimo rope to come up again afterwards. That's right. Mm -hmm. They have to show that they're in complete control of their environment, mm -hmm. and this is what the competition is all about. Doesn't always come off, then. No, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> Shook his head there as though but something went wrong. Oh, that was a marvellous one. He was very nearly airborne. Oh, yes. This is the ultimate in um, canoe looping, mm -hmm. is to get the hold of the canoe right up out of the, the water and into the air. He didn't quite do it on that occasion. No. Mm. Certainly they seem to do more of this than any other. I think it is the most favoured aspect of uh, canoe Here's surfing. Here's a man doing it backwards. Yes. Or not quite on that bit of the way, but now he's... Oh, yes, a simple roll up. It's slow on his roll up there, and he has to paddle up back out through those breaking waves. Probably the hardest section of the uh, surfing is paddling back out to start your next run. Against all that mighty surf. Yes. Mm. And the judges just judge the best run 
the man who handles the canoe the best. Is that That's right? right. He's the winner. Yeah, he's the winner. Chris Baker, this is sprint racing, and you're an international paddler. What are we looking at here? It we're looks most exciting. We're looking at K4s, John, uh, paddling on a thousand meter course, and they're stroking at something like a hundred strokes to the minute. This is a regatta, then, is it? Yes, certain type of regatta. Are there other events? Oh, here's a. Is this a K1? Then, this is, is K1, isn't it? Uh, 500 meters for ladies. Uh, we also have 1,000 meters for men and 10,000 meters as well. They're stroking about 50 strokes to a minute. So they won't stroke as fast as men. No. Uh, this is K1s again, but these are men. These are men. 1,000 meters again. Stroking much higher. What what sort of rate do they do? Uh, they're going about all 80. Do they keep that up the whole length of the course? Well, no. This is four minutes, at least, a thousand metres. So, you know, your start is fast and you, you try and leave something for the finish. I see. And these are K2. K2s, yes, Oliver. Again, very important to get maximum speed at the start. And as you see, the pace slows up as they get to the end. If you're leading, there's no need to go any faster. Who are these three people on the right? This will be your timekeeper and judges. So this is the end of the course? Then. This will be the finishing line, as you can see. Well, that looks most, most beautifully rhythmic, but they're not racing. No, they? going up the start line. Very important to get used to everybody again. And here we are. K4 racing is probably the most exhilarating of all the sprinting. And in the World Championships, you can get at least 30 boats competing at a 10,000 meter event. It certainly looked lovely. Oh, it's a great sport to watch. And now we're at a big house, and this is to do with long-distance rake racing. And I've got John Woolley with me, who is the chairman of the long-distance racing committee. John, what's a big house got to do with long-distance racing? Well, the competitors have been briefed uh, at this particular place, and now they're coming down to see their boats to make sure their spray decks are in order and their life jackets are correct and ready for the race looking for their paddles and making sure that all their equipment is ready for the next hour and a half, which is going to be quite arduous. You put a store on their life jackets then, do you? We take particular care of the safety as much as we can. Um, all these events, of course, have a certain amount of risk. There's always an element of risk when people are on the water. And we like to think that uh, the safety side is well provided for. I saw a foreign flag there. Is this an international event? Yes, indeed. This is one of the internationals that are held each year. Here the boats are coming down, rolling start. The river's what, a bit... What do you mean by rolling start? Well, the river's a bit on the narrow side, and there's quite a bit of water coming down. It would be very difficult to hold the boat stationary on a line. The electricity board at this particular venue have released something like 30 million gallons of water, and this has brought the level of the river up and of course made it much quicker. Uh, we're looking at uh, kayaks. Is this K1s and K2s? Is this right? Yes. Uh, now you see the K2 start, rolling start again, heading down towards the bridge. Uh, Chris, uh, you've done some of this long distance paddling as well. I believe you won the in de devices to Westminster race, haven't you? But do they paddle off at the same rate? Yes, John, it's very, uh, it's very, very important to get out in the front at the start of a long distance race, so you can dictate the speed of the race and paddle in your own speed and not someone else's speed. So having settled down, you can go at a more uh, average rate of paddle. Yes, right? yeah. It's very interesting, Oliver, you know, this race started in 1960 with about nine competitors. Do uh, they just go along like this? Oh no, they must carry around that one, must oh, they? Oh no, they, they're now coming to a portage, and portaging is one of the very important aspects of long distance racing. Portaging should be planned and well organized. And is that what you call a portage? It looks as though you might damage a canoe that way. Well, this is up to the paddler. Um, he can please himself how he gets across the portage. Can he carry it? That's a better way, surely. Yes, um, I would say there's less risk of damage to the boat under these conditions that uh, portage is on, on their shoulder. It makes a difference how you paddle, uh, how you carry the canoe then. You oh, indeed, yes. And uh, time is essential. You see, the race is, is a timed race. Um, and to make a mistake at a portage could involve a loss of position and the loss of several minutes of time. People are very excited at this stage of the race and they're jockeying for position and um, to make a mistake now 
might lose some position. Oh, very easily. Could have cost them uh, a position in the race. Doesn't seem to matter how they tumble down the bank, anyways. Presumably, so long as they don't break the canoe. Exactly. Well, number four there, I believe they're an Austrian crew, weren't they? They were the ultimate winners, I believe. Yes, and it's well, it's well worth noting um, this crew's performance down the course. You, you, you can well see how it ought to be done, and you're also going to get plenty of evidence as how you shouldn't do it. How far is it, then? Well, this race is about 16 miles, um, and will be done in the time of about an hour and a half. What's that chap doing at that bridge, then? Well, this is one of the organisers of the race. This is a marshal on the course, and he's giving guidance to the competitors. Oh, I see. This, these people look tired already. Yes, well, it's, um, it's very demanding on stamina, you know. Um, quite honestly... Oh, oh, Lord, we've got to get on that. Yes, stamina, technique, skill, it all comes into long-distance racing. This is what's made it such a popular sport. You can quite easily see um, that chap's that's probably rehearsed there. He's been over the course. Um, this fellow's coming down. I don't know how he's going to make it. Oh dear, yes, well... Uh, you must know something about where to go down. Yeah, you can where, see there that he's damaged the boat. He's damaged the front of the boat. See it sticking out of the water there? Yes. And he's in considerable trouble. Of course, it's very funny when you fall in the bottom of the way because you know that other boat's going to come down after you. Yes, indeed. And yes. one can be very close behind you. Is it better to go down sideways like that, or, or forwards, or how? Well, it can be better. It's up to the paddler, basically. The, the paddler decides, he makes his choice, and um, having made a choice, uh, he then hopes he's made the right one. This chap's got his mouth wide open. Ooh, that looks a bit cold. Yes, he thought it was cold. Well, it wasn't funk, then. Technique plays a very important part at these stages of the race. Uh, and this, of course, is the difference between the... That's a lady, isn't it? Oh, yes, we have ladies. In actual fact, we cater for seniors, juniors, and ladies, um, and in various classes. But in this particular event, the K1 and the K2, um, this uh, undoubtedly is the premier class to race in. This is where the best competition lies. There seems to be plenty of room to shoot this way or almost where you like. Yes. I think you find this far. Now, he's coming through there beautifully, isn't he? This is a British paddler, and he obviously knows the course, and he's coming through there very well indeed. He looks a bit unstable. These are racing boats, remember, Oliver. Well, that means they're tippies. Yes, yes, very tippy. Well, that looks the best place of the lot. He's come through easily. Yes, he's come through well. Mm. Now, this chap looks in trouble. Now, he's, he's got he's stuck in the stopper. Yes, he's in that stopper, and he's going to have a job. Well, he's not going to get out. He's uh, out that of the boat. Now, what happens now? Can he get in, uh, can he empty the thing, get in and go on again? Providing he can hang on to the paddles and to the canoe and get to the bank and empty the boat out, uh, he then can continue with the race. Um, can he have help? No, he can't have help. Oh, I see. This chap's unstable, isn't he? And he's in trouble as well. You must remember that there's a considerable force and volume, uh, volume of water coming down there. And uh, these boats being so unstable, they are somewhat difficult to control. But here's number four again. Yes, and he's coming through again. He's showing his, his superior skill and technique, and they're coming through beautifully. This is a British pair, having a bit of difficulty, but they're getting through there. When you're chasing the leaders, you've got to do everything in your power to catch them. So oh, you yes, have to take risks. Yes, indeed, Chris. And Another boat stuck in the stopper here. Yes, you notice the rudder's up there. The rudder got caught on obstruction, and um, this has meant that it, he didn't have all the steering he would perhaps uh, he sh perhaps should have had. So this pair is coming over in the place that looks the best. I think the, these two are a local pair and they, they've rehearsed the course. They've been over it once or twice and they've got a good spot to go down. I would have thought there. they would have broken the back of the canoe going down there. Well it does happen, um, fortunately, fortunately not very often, but um, basically I think if people uh, reconnoiter the courses, as many do, and um, this is a great advantage, of course. Yes, but it needs considerable canoeing skill as well. Oh, yes. Like this, oh, yeah. yes. Now, he's gone down there very nicely. So he's all right. And another one's going down yes. well, too, yes. Or is he? No, no, no. Now that illustrates the boat. You can see the boat. Yes. 
beautifully there, can't you? A beautiful, long, smooth line of it. Lovely yes, indeed. Sun. Yes. Remember, these K2s are 22 foot long. So that's an immense amount of boat to handle in rough water. Indeed. Mm. These people have decided to make the fort. What's that swimmer doing there? Well, this is part of the safety precautions. We quite often manage to get them <laughs> floods. That doesn't look very good, does it? No. Going through together like no. that. No. No. Fine example of manners maketh man. <laughs> Agree. Yes. They'd have done better to have waited. Going back to the swimmer, we get these local aqua clubs and they will quite often provide safety help on the course. It's quite an advantage to have this sort of person available. Roping in clubs, other clubs as well. Oh yes. This is a long slog to the end, isn't it? Yes, and this is where the stamina training uh, shows. Here's an example of wash hanging, Oliver. What do you mean by that? The green canoe is uh, riding on the wake of the canoe in front, so hence sort of slipstreaming. Then oh, it's an easy ride. Now that chap's got a spare pair of paddles in case of accidents. And now we've reached the town and we must be nearing the end. Yes, and I think you'll see a good crowd of spectators and uh, a canoeist looking at the at the finishing line very welcomely. <laughs> it legs a bit tatty. I expect the competitors feel a bit like that also. I should think they're a bit uh, a bit shattered now. They've had a very hard race. But How long did it take them to do the 16 miles, did you say? Well, this one it will, will last about an hour and a half. Here you see the Aus Austrian crew coming in, number four coming in to win. Very polished performance, very strong finish. Yes. Please about it as well. Right. Well, this crew look adequately strong, also a bit slower. Yes, I think they're finishing in second place. They're the local crew, and um, they're very pleased to finish and <laughs> get a position. Distinctly worn out. You can see how tired some of these people are now. Indeed. And it's a very funny thing. The the uh, the winner finishes freshest. Uh, it's good to find sea scouts to help them out. I think they're very pleased with that. Yes. With a refreshing drink at the uh, top. Have a welcoming drink and a bit of a chat about the race. These two seem to be coming down in company with each other. Yes. Oh dear, and he's going under the line, not over it. Oh, I don't know, he's got over. Just. Just indeed. Now we come to the presentation, and this is an important aspect of, the, of a well-organized event. It's a good thing to remember that behind each of the long distance races there is uh, a rather struggling organisation who've been working for a long time to prepare and then to cater for the canoeists on the day. And to see some nice trophies and a well organised presentation is um, a very good point. And some aren't some of the competitors glad to get them too? Aren't they just? Well good people, what do you want to do? Slalom, wild water racing, sailing, surfing, sprinting, or long distance racing. It's your choice.